Hello everyone, this is Sam and in today's video we will be talking about the Dragon Response missions, but more generally about content in Guild Wars 2. Indeed, our subreddit has been pretty critical lately of the content that Ironnet has delivered, especially after coming to the realization that what they were playing for the past week wasn't just a teaser for some weekly or bi-weekly cycle of events, but instead the only thing they would be getting for the next few months. However, as it has been stated on the subreddit, this isn't our first rodeo, and the best way to understand where I'm coming from is to do a little retrospective on the content we have been given so far, and how exactly it turned out that each iteration of it came to be abandoned. After that is done, we will also be talking about monetization for MMOs and more specifically what could be done in Gore's 2's case. But first, let's listen to the intro. For this video specifically, my focus will be PvE related, mostly covering instance content. This means I will be covering dungeons, fractals, raids, strike missions, and finally the Dragon Response missions. When Guild Wars 2 first released, back in 2012, all we had for PvE instance content, beyond the story missions, were the dungeons, split between the story and explorable modes. The latter being the one which the better rewards were tied to. But as these dungeons were tied to the world map and the exploration you made of it, also based on the storyline leading up to the death of the Elder Dragon's item, the design of further instances would have to branch out of the established instance model we got on release. That meant that the new instances would be tied to a new iteration of PvE content. This is when we got the Blue Fractals of the Mists a seemingly perfect model for future implementations of content, which holds true to this day as we do get added content in the form of new fractals, released at a cadence that, however, isn't based off any lunar or solar calendar whatsoever. I, however, will not get into the history of fractals, as that would deserve its very own video. Then, the design team over at Ironanet decided to drop a huge bomb on us, the player base, one that completely changed the face of the PvE content as we knew it. This all happened in 2015, with the first 10-man raid wing being released alongside the Heart of Thorns expansion. The fact that raids were tied to an expansion is a big reveal of how development works at Ironanet, in my opinion. Shipping new content can be done regularly, but delivering a huge, game-changing bit of content happens when an expansion happens, and they tie some of the key aspects of the greater instanced content with the expansion level mechanics, such as glidings or mounts were. Fast forward to 2019, when we first got strike missions, near the end of the year. Although technically Freezy was a precursor to it during the 2018 Winter's Day Festival, that's yet another iteration of instance content that differed from what was previously established. The issue here is that the most casual part of the player base hasn't felt until now. Support to whatever was the new iteration of content ended with the new iteration that began. We got less fractals than promised, because raids took the development capacity. Now we don't get new raids, because strike missions are the new raids and have taken the development capacity. And here, we are touching the concept of a development cycle with the tip of the finger. Making something takes time and effort, and given that we know that Ironnet has been working on an unreleased IP for a while, we can't assume the resources allocated to the failure content between expansion packs has been reduced for Guild Wars 2. This means that while story will be happening as part of the natural life cycle of the game, instances will get reworked into something simple, even if that means dropping the previously established iteration. With this whole scenario unfolded, what about the Reddit uproar, which is what sparked this video? Well, to be fair, it was predictable because of how the game is marketed. You can drop it and come back for updates. But if the update itself feels lacking, not to say that it necessarily is, then what is there to come back to? That is what Reddit is saying. They have reached a point where the development cycle doesn't quench their thirst anymore and they genuinely worry over what is happening, some more vocally than others. To add fuel to the fire, Aronet is not giving any answer to the Reddit blow-up, as there probably isn't other than stakeholders in the current development decision at NCSoft have given us a route to take and we are allocating resources as possible to cover the delivery of content whichever content that may be, that is. 
To sum up the situation, we have a company that isn't allocating development resources to what has previously been made, but instead to whatever they can make in their current situation. And while the uproar is understandable, it is key to figure out what are the driving factors behind the machine. Let's now do some corporate finance. The revenue streams for Ironnet are, simply put, the original purchases, expansion purchases, and the eventual gem purchases. There is no subscription fee, no gacha system or loot box system, Nothing that makes people purchase beyond the original box, as gold can be exchanged for gems. There is also no differentiation made between paid and not paid gems. Thus, unless the output of the development cost is a sellable product, such as an expansion pack, it makes sense to allocate minimal resources to it. To end on a more positive note, I believe that the fact that the company has to be expansion driven from a financial point of view least, is quite good for us, since it ensures that the content we get with that expansion pack will be worth the money and quite possibly an overhaul of current existing systems, as we have seen so far with mouse and gliding in Central Terria, some major QL improvements and an overall better game. The issues that are the gaming performance and the PvE power creep are probably not going to be a priority however, as the past has shown us. Finally, I wish to add an open question to you the viewer. Do you think that you would buy into a pseudo subscription system? Today, for 10 euros, you can get 800 gems in the exchange. What if Arnonet offered a form of a subscription where for 10 euros you would get 1.2k gems instead, so that's a 50% increase, but would have to log in each day over 24 days within a month to get 50 gems? The same way that the daily login rewards are claimed, for instance. I think that this would secure a revenue stream for Internet, while also pushing upwards the number of people playing regularly, so to speak, which is always a nice figure to show to shareholders. Another option that we have covered on the Twitch streams was the making of Living Story as a paying release, and you'd have them free for the people who would sub on a monthly basis. It was said that this was relatively akin to ESO's Premium Pass. My final idea actually resonates with something that I have said earlier about the gems. That would be to have a difference made between the gems that you buy with real life money and the ones that you exchange gold for. This way cosmetic items could be made into purchased gems only, while the rest, which are mostly QOL for the game, uh, such as crafting licenses, um, bank storage, etc. could be bought with the exchanged gems. But of course, these are only my own ideas, and you may feel free to discuss them in the comments. Before ending this video, I wish to thank my patrons for the growing support they have shown me, as well as the rest of the people helping out on projects like the Raiding League and the Economy videos. Part of making a game better is to have a community which thrives, and we all do our best for this here. I will thus be releasing another goal making guide soon on the theme of investing. By the way, while I am partnered with Arnet, this video contains my opinion and nothing was reviewed or changed by them. And now, I wish every single one of you some happy playing and to have fun.